now we will be talking about the uh, logical functions that is like logical functions are there in programming languages also if switch case are there but here we can go for if statement so we will try to do one problem so we are taking this purchase table and uh, what we will do is that we will check the price and if the price is less than 10 we can create a column called our like status of the purchase and if it is less than 10 we can uh, enter the record as affordable if it is greater than 10 uh, we can write it as expensive so what we are going to do is that we can create a column just click on create co new We can give the name of the column as budget. It's called to if statement we can write if this price which is price is greater than 10 then the result will come whatever it is true you have to write it here and uh, no else statement is there just put on the comma and uh, give the false statement as an as parameter so if purchase price is greater than 10 you have to type expensive If it is less, so obviously the false statement will be, it should come less than 10. So less than 10, it will be affordable. We will check and see whether it is working. So all the ones which are less than 10 has come as affordable. And uh, can check whether it is greater than 10, whether anything is greater than 10. Yeah, 15 is the we'll check whether it is greater. This is one sort of filtering you might know. So whatever values we want in the in this table you can select it and click ok and that values will be shown in this so 15 it is expensive so whatever we have written in the if statement has come true and uh, so that is the if statement Yeah, hello. This uh, here we will see how the calculated column works and how a measure works. See, for example, for our calculated column, what we can do is here we have seen the price of a single item. We haven't changed that. I'll change it. So we are getting the price of a single item. 
but here the quantity in the process table is two and the quantity will, or no quantity will be two. So the total amount won't be 8.5, total amount is around $17. So we have to create another column for calculating the total purchase, total purchase. Total purchase is price of this and into quantity. So for that we can create a column. This is also, it, it is like, okay, this column, this row into this row and it will be placed here. Same way, next row into next row. It won't be like calculating all the, adding all the quantity items and uh, adding all the price items and then finally at the end uh, uh, multiplying it together it will be doing it row by row so it is also called row con row context so it is taking one row at a time so we are going to create a calculated column and we will be uh, and we will be giving the name as a revenue price into quantity what is price into quantity So we're getting the revenue. So for calculating the whole revenue, I mean, adding up the whole revenue, one way is that you can just take the revenue and you will get the sum of values like this. But it will be useful for you to, for working faster and uh, more useful for other functions it will be better to create a measure for this measure means okay now calculated column we have told us okay it will take in a row by row measure means it will take in the column wise entire column in the stress it will add and it will show the output so for creating measure we can create here new measure so total new total revenue some function like some function and revenue there is no need of any filter to be given in this uh, measure because or either we need to just we need to get the entire value but if you want to get only the, the revenue of the affordable amount affordable purchases then we need to give a filter so for filtering we need to get some mix that we, that we will come to later now for some we are giving the revenue so you won't be able to see the output here only way you can know the output of measure uh, just by adding a card and the measure will be yeah total measure and in this card you can just place the total measure it is the same So this is about calculated columns and measure. So now we are going to see about cross filters. So why we are why we are using cross filters is because see there is a uh, there is a control which is going through here. See the flow is from. POS to this purchase table and the same way the flow is from product to the purchase table. 
So that means whatever things we needed, or whatever columns we needed to get from uh, through the product, we will be able to get since the flow is from here. But from the product, you can't get anything from POS or from the POS, we won't be able to get anything from the product table. Why? Right? Because here the, the flow is only till per purchase. Here the flow won't, through here flow won't go because from here flow is coming back, isn't it? So for making the flow pass through here and get the value from here, we need to make this flow bi-directional. This is actually single directional, one to many, isn't it? So one way to do is that we can right click here, we can take the properties and there you can uh, select it to both the direction. You will be seeing a window where you will be uh, noticing that the direction will be, see the direction is a one direction. You can make it as both directions. The problem is when you make here both the direction, both direction, so it will be, it will be permanently there like that. So other calculations will have a problem with respect to this. So in these kind of cases, we use cross filter only for that measure or that uh, calculated column that cross filter. That this will become bidirectional and we will get the result. So to sh show you an example of that, okay, before that uh, we will uh, do a single directional uh, calculation. We, we will go here in the region table. We will uh, create a column and uh, that column will show how much purchase you have done. I mean, how the total revenue you have got with respect to your region. There is no need to add filter because the flow is going like this. It is going like this. And then it is going directly to the purchase table. So only thing we need to know or do is that we need to make sure that this uh, region, uh, this column, we are relating the purchase table. So we will take the region, region table, and he will, here we will create a new column. You have to create this column with the related function now. Also, otherwise uh, the value won't be correct. So we can write here price related plus two. Sum x. Related table. And uh, what is the related table? And we need to do the filter for the sum x. It is uh, revenue, I think. We have purchased revenue. So here without any cross filter, we are getting the exact value of these numbers, these uh, exact uh, price details of this region. That is because this is single directional. Now we will try the same procedure here also. We will try to get the production cost with respect to the senders. So with respect to the senders, uh, uh, how much production costs they have occurred, I mean, how much product they have, uh, they have given to these centers or they have purchased through these centers and what is the production cost of that. Uh, this is not really related to analytics and oh my, of course you can analyze this, but this is just to show to you that, show to you that about the cross filter. So we will create a column in uh, POS 
and uh, we will get the sum of all the sum or we can get the count of all the products um, with respect to the uh, center table. So without anything, we will give the same uh, formula there and we will see whether it is working. So here we got it. creating the new column for that. And we will create the count of products. with respect to the related function. Count x. And related table, product. And uh, expression as product. You just need to uh, count the product ID to get the count of the products. So you just see all the product found is showing in everything. At the same time, the, almost the same formula we have given to this uh, region table and this region table, and uh, we got the correct answer for that. That is the reason why this is in a single directional, so it is working properly. But here it is bidirectional; it is not in a single direction. That is why you are not getting the proper value from the same way if you, are, if you won't be able to get the production cost also. So for that, we are going to use cross filter for that. So how we are going to use cross filter, we will see. So take the POS table and let this be like this. We will create another column. Here you can write the product, count details. You can use calculate function. Calculate function and inside the calculate you can, because cross filter you need to use uh, it with a filter function. So that space calculate is a filter function, so you can use it. So inside that you need to use count. Count of product product table. So it will be table with column name. And then we are going to use the filter for the uh, calculate function. And here we have to give cross filter. Cross filter. And what is a cross filter? The cross filter, we have, what we have to give is. So, which is the, here we have to, we are going to get the count of this much products and the cross filter should be, uh, the filter should be between these two tables and uh, what is the link or the, what is the key that is linking the, between those three, these two tables or product key, product ID and product ID. So, this product, product dot product ID should be equal to purchase dot product ID. So here we have to give that 
cross filter and product dot product id and this is the left column this is the right column in that here and that is purchase purchase or product id and then we have to give the filter type that is both so now the function is over we will you can see how it is see see the difference between these two this is the actual code and this is the actual count so in some in some center there is no product but here without uh, using cross filter we are seeing 19 products otherwise it is no product some some it is 10 and it is uh, totally different values so this is the use of cross filter where when there is a not a flow when we have when we are having an opposite flow we can use cross filter to make that flow by directional so that we will get the correct result for that the same thing we can uh, use the measure also for getting the product count or measure or you can i mean with the product uh, the product cost related with this uh, pavilion you can try and use measure and you can uh, try and use the same formula but the formula here it should be different it should be sum and uh, uh, the product and the product id should be changed to production cost so we will be getting the correct measure or even you can same thing you can uh, create a calculated column for that also so this is with regard to cross filter you can try So now this time we are going to see about the filter function called all. This all filter function is uh, used to uh, take away all the filters from the current scenario. So for that we can do an example. Uh, like we can uh, get a purchase uh, count. I mean the percentage of the order count or the percentage of the purchase count from this table. So, what we have to do is, uh, with respect to the region, if you are taking the region, how many orders are there according to the region, and uh, the total, how many orders are there divided by the total number of orders. That will give you the percentage of. So, in the, it is, this calculation will get complicated once we start using it. Uh, we will see how it is. So first we need to uh, create a measure of total number of orders. That means total number of purchases. So what we have to do is that we have to create a measure. So we are going to create a measure to uh, count the number of purchases. So we can give the name as order. Total order we can total orders in count. Purchase with respect to purchase ID we can count it so we'll be getting the count for total orders and uh, that's it. so this much is the total orders so we can if we try to attach this total orders to the region and we can find how many orders are per region.
So we can add total orders per minute. So this much of orders and how many orders are per region. So now actually we want to calculate the percentage of the order. That means 1074 divided by 32,470. So this very difficult to calculate each and everything because now anyway it is only this much of region and if it is a long list containing thousands of rows, it will be difficult to calculate in the one by one. So we need to give a standard formula for that. So you can uh, you can write the order like uh, total orders divided by total orders because once you uh, write the formula like that here you will get just one 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 because this total order is getting filtered everywhere. So you can't use the that formula here. For that you need this formula. You need a value which is not filtered by anywhere so that we can divide directly so just think about it and just think about uh, one scenario that here one column is there in that column all the values are 32,470 if a column is like that then you can divide this column and this is empty so for getting that call if you want to get that column you just need to take off the filter from this you don't need the if you if you if you if you if you want to get a column like this with 32471 you don't need to take the filter from this if you take the filter from this every row will be having the same number so what we have to do now is that we have to create a measure of total orders taking all these filters if any, if any filter is there, it should be taken off. Okay, so that, so it will be, so we, what we have to do is that we have to create a measure for that. So what we will do is that we will create a measure. So in this measure, all the filters will be taken off from this question. So we can write this. All orders. We can use the calculate function. Calculate. You can take this uh, uh, total orders, the measure which we have taken. We, have, we need to clear up this measure, this uh, filter from this measure. So we can take total, total orders. And from which table you need to take over the it is a purchase table. And we need to select this filter and purchase. So we have created an online machine. Now we will put that order also in that C1. When that order is placed in this table, see all the filters are gone and we got the exact order. All the orders with the same number report. Now we can divide this by this to get the percentage of orders. So this, this order in whichever, with respect to whichever, a column you give, you won't get any filters. For example, if you if you want to take uh, another column, another table, that that in a table, and if you want to say the product name, that is, you want to get the product number. product name and if you want to get the total orders how many orders to how many you have got 
here we got the total orders here they have we got the total orders and the uh, nasha has filtered all these orders with respect to the product name now we are going to put this all orders we have put this here also see it didn't change at all so that is what when we use all function when we use this all function it will erase all the filters with respect to the measure so now we need to calculate the percentage of orders calculating the percentage of orders we can select a measure percentage of orders equals total orders divided by all orders so we have the percentage of orders and we have we have taken it So this is the percentage of orders, and uh, we have the percentage of orders, and. Uh, we need to convert this into percentage so i just click on the format and make a percentage and then we got the percentage so this kind of uh, functions all filter is used because here we don't have any other hope only way is to take off all the filters from this you know, value from this order the same same way you can all the use all filters in here also to get uh, for the calculations so this is all about all this all filters which is used to remove all the filters from the current scenario so now we have come to another function that is called earlier earlier function what it will do is that it will check the one row whether previously that row contents is there or what actually it will create a sub table and it will collect all if you are suppose if you are writing earlier to this product id it will create a sub table with all this product id and it will filter it so we will have we will uh, to a problem like uh, how many product id um, how many number of product id is there in this purchase table that means okay this product id one how many times the next product id how many times are there in this uh, purchase table so that we can uh, uh, use the earlier filter also so how we are going to do is that we will create a column here and in that column we will uh, write each and every we will calculate and we will show each and every how many times this product id occurs in this uh, table so that what what we can do is that we can create a new column So we can give the name as product per purchase. What we have to do is that we have to filter. 
this uh, row. You have to filter this row like product ID. Earlier product ID should be the current product ID. You have to check whether this product ID, earlier product ID, is current product ID. So the function earlier comes. So uh, we have to, uh, I mean, we had to uh, give the uh, table and then the expression earlier, which is product ID. And we have to close it. And now we have to give the expression is equal to current purchase, which is product ID. So now the filter is okay. Now what it will do is that it will create a table, subtable containing all the filters of the product ID and how many inches of the product ID. Now what we have to do is that we have to count that number. So there is a statistical function called count rows. So use that count rows and We'll check whether it is coming or not. Yeah, I think it came. Uh, how we need to, since the data is so much, uh, we don't know how, how it is coming correctly. So we will take the least one, and that is 43. 43 is the least one. So we will take 43 and check which product ID it is. It is product ID 8. So now how we are going to check is just take product ID 8 and check whether 48 entries, 43 entries are there. Obviously 43 will be here. So the meaning and all, we hope it is correct because uh, in product ID 2, one and all is having 10,000 rows. So like this, we can calculate the number of products per purchase in this uh, table using this earlier function. The earlier function is mainly used for this to check the, uh, the, the value which is there in the earlier part. So now we are going to see another function that is, that is called a lookup value. See so what happens for lookup value is uh, uh, now if you go to the model, if you want to display this production cost in a column in this purchase table, we just need to write related table and this uh, production cost and it will be shown there. So we will try that. So we will create a new column. So we have going to create a column. It is called the production cost from the product table. So so you can type related. If there is any aggregation here, then you can, then you'll be using related table. Now, no sense, no aggregation, just you need to copy that column and paste it here. We are using just related and product production cost.
Now the production cost of the product table, we got it here. You can check it, production cost. Yeah, production cost of uh, product ID one is 7.919. The same is here in the purchase table. The product ID one is having product cost 7.19. But now, if we, if we have a problem, like uh, just think about uh, this scenario that, okay, this relationship, it is gone. So some scenario or something came and, this, and there is no relationship between these two. When uh, both the keys are similar, but we haven't given any relationship among this. So that means after that, if we go and check here, the production cost is showing as zero. So still, if you need the production cost, we'll have another function that is called lookup. Even with relation, you can use that lookup function, but lookup will be more adva the advantage. You can use it when there is no relationship and the relationship line is not there, you can use lookup. So we can create a column using lookup production. production cost okay. lookup value and from what value you want you want product production cost and here which is the key that that is uh, common to both the tables that will be product, product ID, and purchase product ID. We give this, we'll check and see whether without relation, it is coming. Yeah, without the relation itself, which is showing. This is one good advantage of lookup value. Because now when you see product and purchase table don't have any relationship with them. They have only the similar product IDs, keys, but they don't have the relationship. We haven't set the relationship. And because of that, whatever we have, whatever value we have written with respect to the related column, everything is showing error. But at that time, we can use lookup value to show this uh, column without any relationship. Now we can just uh, proceed with the relationship. Even with relationship, this is going to work. So the product ID of purchase and the product ID of product is uh, related. And now once again, we'll check it. So all the tables are cleared and uh, all the columns are cleared. Here how we got this value is using related function and here how we got this value is using lookup value. Look up value the advantage here is that if no relationship is there, also you can 
you get the value and you can paste it. You can use the value from other table. So now we can uh, use the YTD function. YTD is here to date function. The same as uh, MTD is also there, month to date, QT, QTD, data to date. So YTD state, the, what it describes is that it describes the details of payment from the year beginning till the current date, current date or till the end of the year, I means January to December. Not financial year, just uh, the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Same way for MTD. MTD means the beginning of the month to the end of the month. So we will try to see an example of how we can create a YTD for this current project. We we'll take the another page and uh, we'll take a matrix table. We will take the First, we will take the date. This much years we are having. So, YTD means all the uh, revenue, which is the, the cumulative sum of all the revenue, which is uh, which we got in 2015. And then once again, it will start and uh, cumulative sum of all the revenues which you are getting in 2016. And it will go on like that. It, it won't calculate everything together. So for example, if you take the total revenue, oh, total revenue is showing in a different manner. I think uh, the table, the date table is not uh, related with the uh, uh, purchase table. So we can go to the model and see, yeah, uh, calendar is uh, not joined with the purchase table or not related to this table. Actually, this date has to be related to purchase date. And that is fine. So now, if you see the okay, total revenue, we are going to see, we are seeing. So in 2016, this much, 2017, this much, but when we, uh, when we, do change the date hierarchy to single date. We are going to see each and every day how much revenue which has generated and uh, we are getting the total amount uh, at the end of all these years. But uh, when we when we do the YTD, all this till December 29, it will calculate the cumulative amount and it will show after that from January 6, 2016, it will start one month in 9.5 so And then it will add up all these revenues and it will show. We'll try to uh, create a measure. So we'll, we'll uh, name it as Revenue total YTD. The name of the function is also like that total total YTD because expression expression means this uh, revenue which value we are going to split it. Okay, so it is total revenue, total revenue and the date. Since we have joined the date column with the purchase uh, date column in the calendar table to the purchase table, we can give the date, calendar and date. That's it. We check and see whether it is coming correctly. Uh, revenue or revenue activities. So we have got the revenue by today. This will make you understand correctly. So it is uh, the transaction started 
from 17 December 2015, and it is summing up everything until December 31st. And uh, once again, it is starting from January, and it is going till. Uh, see, till December 31st, it is going to 44,725. And after that, once again, it is starting this way. So when you consider this amount, you don't need to worry about this because this is the last day of uh, this last date, which is shown. So suppose it was the uh, last date was 31st December 2016. This 44,728 would have been displayed here. You can, learn. you can remove the total itself using format. But now no need. We can see we can see another. We have to check other values also. So let it be like that. So now we have seen this function total. Revenue total YTD. There is one more function called dates YTD. That function is used with filter. You can use external filter for that function. So we will try that also. That function we can use it using calculate and you can use it with external functions. You can add more filters for that. So we'll try that also. And take no measure. Revenue base by GD calculate total revenue and then we can add filter. Dates by GD and you can add the date. So that will also work the same way, but here the advantage is that you can add more filters to that, to this uh, formula. So we are getting the same uh, revenue, all the amount is same and perfect. Now the same way total YTD uh, is there, the same way total QTD is also the total MTD is also the MTD means okay the month beginning to the month end. So we'll try that also once. We'll create a measure. And this measure we can revenue total MTD. Uh, Total MTD, total revenue, and then the date. So here we can find a different uh, way of showing the values in the table. Since it is uh, this uh, 2015 deals with only one month again, it will be exactly the same as YTD and MTD. But when you go to the 2016th year, so the month starts with, uh, four, the revenue starts with 4th January and everything is similar until 31st January. Because on 31st January, YTD is continuing and MTD stops. The, and 1st of February, it is starting once again. So that is the difference between MTD and YTD. Same way QTD is also there. QTD means it will calculate the quarter for three months. The same procedure it will do for first three months. This MTD can also be used as uh, the filters using dates MTD. And you can explore more about that. And uh, this is almost all that much about YTD and MTD.
so now we are going to uh, use another function which is useful for checking the uh, revenue last month which you can use for comparison of the revenue of last month or sales of last month or last year or last quarter so for that we use another function called same period last year so we will try to see an example of that so we are getting taking the new page we'll take this uh, matrix we'll get the date uh, in this date hierarchy we will take away the quarter and the day we need only year and month and we will expand it now we are going to put the total revenue in that so this is the total revenue and uh, for each and every month and each and every year so we can use uh, the same period last year to compare the total compare the amount compare the revenue with respect to the last year so we can uh, try to write the measure so measure will be you have to write it as a filter of a calculate function so same period last year for revenue equals to uh yeah, that measure is like a filter for revenue so we can use calculate function calculate total revenue total revenue and same period last year and you need to use the date so we will be red last year so if you if you see this uh, table table you will understand why we have used same period last year because see 2015 the overall revenue was 40.49 that you are considering with you can uh, compare with the overall uh, overall of uh, i mean 2016 the same way with respect to 2017 also when you see january so january it was uh, 751 see the same 751 is here now here what we can do is that we can compare it because see this 40.49 was uh, the revenue of december 2015 the same revenue of 2016 we can compare with this the good thing for this is that we can uh, if no kpi is defined we can even uh, define the kpi with the previous year last month because uh, previous um, years kpi previous years uh, revenue and you can use that as kpi to compare with the current year so for all, lots of calculations or lots of analytics we can use this uh, function see according to this uh, july it is uh, 5266 and voila you can just check it like this last year it was more come back to this this last month last month last year 2016 it was more come back to this this year so all these things we can understand with respect to this function another one more function is there we can get all these values using another function also that function is called date add so we can try that also that also will be shown the same table we can try that function and create a measure
revenue last year. Then calculate total revenue. Data add calendar date. You can give minus one last year, so minus one or even last uh, before two years, minus so minus two. You can give so interval is minus one, and we can select whether it is year, month, or quarter. So since uh, since we are comparing with it with uh, previous year, we will keep it as year return and we will try to work it on that of course we got it and uh, this table is same both the columns look similar so both the functions we can use for this the same way in this function we have mentioned about year we have mentioned in this function the year And if you change it to month, we can get the previous months. So we will try to do something like that also. Previous month, how it will be. So revenue previous month. Okay. Calculate total revenue and calendar date so previous month We didn't put the function. In hurry, I forgot to put the function data. And the data, we have to mention the calendar date as one month. So here we can see the performance of previous months. See uh, what we will do is that we will move it, sorry. Yeah, we will move it here. Yeah, now it will. So here December, it is uh, 40 and uh, the same 40 values seen in here. So January's revenue is seven. 51 so here we are showing the january 751 so it is simple that okay february we have 260 296 and we can compare it with previous month's revenue and uh, with respect to previous month's revenue 2690 the current uh, revenue of february is very less so you can use this as kpi also so all this can be done through this through these kind of uh, functions, even uh, instead of month, you can give quarter for comparing the quarters. So it is, it, this is a very useful function which is being used in analytics. Hope it is, hope it will help you. So now in a scenario, if you want to if you are taking the purchase table and uh, you need only the values which is uh, having the budget affordable, you don't want the values which are expensive. You want only the table which has the values affordable. So if you want like that, instead of having all the uh, entire data set in this uh, table, you can 
get only the values which are available. You can, one way is that you can uncheck this, but it is, it, you can uncheck this and see it. Another way is to create a table, which will be a subtable of this. In that table only, we can create only the values, uh, only the columns which are having values in under this budget. So we can try that. So new table, you have to click. And there is a function which is called calculate where you can create which through which you can create a table. You, you, you might know calculate function is so the calculate function is used for filtering operation. Same way you can use calculate table uh, by for creating new table with filter function. So what we can do is that we can create a table called budget table. budget purchase, calculate table, and from which table you want to uh, get the values, get the data set, purchase, purchase table, and what is the condition, what is the filter for that? I guess the purchase budget, it should be affordable. So hope this will work and uh, you will be getting the table. Yeah, you got the table which is having uh, only affordable uh, as say only affordable as that. You have a new table. The new table is here, budget price. And you have a new table with, which is having all the data set with affordable budget. So, this is the use of uh, creating new tables so where you're using calculate table. Now, another way of uh, creating the table is through a function called summarize column. It does the same thing like uh, in Power Query, when you get the table in Power Query, you can group the table and you can create a, another table. It will be very effective if you do the same way in Power Query, but since we have the DAX function, we will check that also. So now what we need to do is that we have a table called region and uh, we are planning to uh, summarize this region table this under region name and uh, with respect to the purchase quantity so with respect to all the regions we will sum up this quantity and we will create another table and we will show up. almost similar to group by in uh, query power query anyway we will try to do it in the tax also so for that we need to do is that we need to create a new table new table so then quantity per region we can quantity per region per summarize columns and which column to summarize it is uh, the column which column to summarize means we are going to summarize region name region name and uh, we are going to give a new name for quantity total quantity and then we have to give the expression expression is sum of all the quantities in that purchase sum of all the this uh, all this sum of all the quantity purchase quantity
So now call the OCS quantity. Now we are going to get a new table. Yeah, now we got a new table with uh, the total quantity, total purchase quantity in this region. And uh, we have a new table for analysis. So in this way through DAX, you can uh, create the table, but it will be very effective when you create, if you are creating the table uh, using group by in Power Query itself. 